you, you talked about the addition to everything else that they have, you know, Brady, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans. I mean, outside of maybe adding another piece on the offensive line, this has the potential to be the best offense in the NFL, the way, the way they are positioned right now. Does this move in your mind make them the favorites in the NFC South? Because we know it's going to be, it's going to be New Orleans and somebody's got to take it from them. You have to figure, you know, Atlanta's like kind of in tra- a little bit of transition. Carolina's completely flipped the book, which by the way, your other punch face is unemployed. So yeah. uh, we know that we know that makes you happy there. And, and, I, and I love the, you know, Carolina, Carolina, the, if you follow them on the Twitter, the Panthers oh. on Twitter, they, they did a good job of kind of downplaying the fact that Gronkowski is going to New England, or I'm sorry, to Tampa Bay. Uh, they, I think they understand that they're kind of in a rebuilding process. Again, like you mentioned, punch faces unemployed. We have two punch faces in the same division unemployed. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. I don't. But, you know, those people out there who think they're good quarterbacks, they uh, hate to see it. But, um, again, like you mentioned, I I don't know if Tampa – I don't know if this puts them over the top of New Orleans because, again, we've seen New Orleans play together for a long time. and We've seen the system. We've seen Drew Brees uh, play within the system with with Sean Payton and and what they can accomplish. And I I think that's why I hesitate to put them over – uh, to put Tampa Bay over the New Orleans Saints just right now, we haven't seen what Bruce Arians can do with uh, uh, Tom Brady. We've seen what Bruce Arians can do with Andrew Luck. We've seen what Bruce Arians can do out in Arizona with Carson Palmer. We've seen him be successful with uh, good, very good quarterbacks. Yeah. But he and Tom Brady have yet to work together. So that's why right now, given the history of Sean Payton and Drew Brees, I cannot elevate them above those two. But, again, with the expanded playoff system and the NFC in general, again, like you said, both divisions very top-heavy, but the NFC is not nearly as top-heavy. The AFC has one or two more teams, at least, who are are guaranteed playoff contenders that the NFC just doesn't have. Uh, You know, we're we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, what 8-8 and team can make the playoff here at the end. Uh, I, I think it immediately makes Tampa Bay a playoff contender. Obviously, you see uh, a guy like punch face number one, Jameis Winston, throwing 30 touchdowns and over 5,000 yards. You put a quarterback who's not going to make dumb decisions in there, you have to immediately make them a playoff team. Uh, again, if, if you're a betting person, you if you were putting money down on Tampa Bay at the end of the season, you're about to pay off really well. Uh, but – I don't know if you can elevate them over New Orleans at this time just because of the history of Sean Payton and Drew Brees yeah. and what they've been able to accomplish there. The freshness of Arians and 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 Brady. Byron at, Leftwich. At the time. <laughs> it, it, How about again, that? I, I, their system is really good. It is. Uh, you know, Byron Leftwich drafted after Tom Brady. I mean, <laughs> younger than the quarterback he's going to be coaching. He's now uh, his boss. It's crazy. My 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 former old line coach uh, Harold Goodman, who was the run game coordinator down there in Tampa Bay, uh, played with Tom Brady back in back in uh, back in the Michigan days. Uh, it's funny that that he's working with guys he used to play with or guys he is older than. But again, you know, instant upgrade. Obviously, I, I don't think anybody around around the NFL and around football thinks that this isn't an upgrade. But I, I just cannot put them above New Orleans right now. But certainly, certainly they are a playoff team. And, and like we know, and like we've mentioned many times here on Fumblegate, if you put Tom Brady in the playoffs, you always got a chance with number 12 under center. I, I think New, Tampa Bay needs to address the offensive line because we, even, even though Punchface threw all those picks, he did throw for 5,000 yards. But if you go back and watch those games, he took a beating. He's under pressure, and, we, and, and we've known that for a long time. Yeah. He, and, and he's a quarterback who does not thrive under pressure. He has to be protected. Again, it's one of the things that Tom Brady has experienced in the last few years when the, the loss of the offensive line uh, – now, they were winning Super Bowls with really good offensive lines, but they've also still been successful with marginal, as you might call it. Uh, you know, they lost Nate Solder to New York a few years ago, his left tackle for years. Uh, that makes a difference. But, again – a quarterback who's poised under pressure is much different than a guy who's kind of a, uh, you know, effort, let's see what happens guy as yeah. punch face was. 
you know, a guy who's a little more poised. I totally agree that they need to protect Tom Brady, and, and we know at 47, 49, 40, 53 years old, however old Tom Brady is now, uh, at 43 years old, Tom Brady needs to be protected. Like, you cannot let that man take hits. But, um, you know, he's still going to make better decisions. And, and, and we've seen what Bruce Arian has, has done. Uh, you know, with a guy like Andrew Luck who couldn't take the hits and with a guy like Carson Palmer who was in the advanced stages of his of his career when he when he got to Arizona, they're going to design the offense to fit a guy like Tom Brady, similar to what they were trying to do the last few years in New England with him. They just didn't have weapons around him. And that's why I think this makes so much of a difference when, like you mentioned, when you look at the guys that they've put around Tom oh. Brady and say, uh, with Chris Goodwin and Mike Evans, and now you bring in a guy like Rob Gronkowski, uh, Ronald Jones is the running back. Well, OJ like OJ Howard, their other stud tight end. OJ, yeah, OJ Howard, who's no slouch. Like there is plenty of, of weapons, mm. plenty of weapons there in in Tampa Bay. I think I just scrapped, got rid of the video. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> plenty of weapons there in Tampa Bay, and again, they're going to design the offense. Uh, to make him successful. So it, it, it's going to be very interesting to see how how this offense works out. But, again, the addition of Rob Murkowski, and we talked about it before we went on the show, the, the moves uh, that have been made in the offseason as far as big players changing teams, obviously we talked about it before. Tom Brady is the biggest one to move, obviously the greatest quarterback of all time, moving teams. But you bring in probably a Hall of Fame tight end and, and – in theory, if you put him in a laid-out career, if he plays every snap he can play, maybe the best tight end of all time, you immediately move them to a division where the only other uh, alpha dog is the New Orleans Saints who've been struggling of late and expand the playoff positions as the NFL has done, it immediately makes Tampa Bay a contender, immediately. I think the other thing, too, that still keeps New Orleans ahead of me, you talked about all the continuity and everything that they have there, both offensively and defensively, but I think they made one of the most shrewd and most brilliant moves of the offseason in signing Emmanuel Sanders. Because yes. now, now all of a sudden, you can't double Michael Thomas on every single play. Sure, they're going to line him up everywhere, and he's still going to catch 130 balls throughout the season, but you've got a guy now on the other side because, you know, you, you look back at the last few years and all the production that Michael Thomas has provided, and it's remarkable given the fact that nobody can name their number two wide receiver. No one. I don't even know if Sean Payton knows who his number two wide receiver is. Drew Brees sure as hell doesn't know who his number two wide receiver is. But now you've well, a guy like him. number one and then like seven two A's. Yeah, two there you go. So now you got a guy on Sanders to put on the other side. That keeps your – that keeps the defense a little more honest. You can't necessarily shade everybody over to Michael Thomas because Sanders, yeah, he's, he's a little longer in the tooth compared to some other wide receivers, but he still has plenty of speed 